The adventure genre has come a long way in terms of puzzle design and general structure, from the days of Zork and Maniac Mansion to today with stuff like Life is Strange, the Telltale games, and etc. But the evolution of puzzle design is a very interesting thing to track, and it's something that a lot of developers can tend to struggle with, be it in their own adventure games or putting puzzles in other genres. And very recently I had a chance to play some of the Seventh Guess, the was considered to be a seminal adventure game of the 90s, which is also very painfully out of date today. And it's a great example of the risks of using an out-of-universe puzzle versus an in-universe puzzle. Now when we use these terms, we're referring to the concept of logic. Now when we use logic, we usually refer to real-world logic. Red means stop, green means go, don't uh, put your hand on a burning plate, don't stick a fork in an electrical socket, that kind of stuff. And while common knowledge is a major part of a lot of video games, what we see as a difference between in-universe and out-of-universe design is that in games that feature fantasy, otherworldly, or just basically non-realistic settings, you can still have an eternal logic built on the rules of this universe. So if we live in a universe where everybody has wings and they can fly around, then you wouldn't necessarily have a puzzle that the player has to get over a brick wall by solving something. More importantly, having your game's own internal logic goes a long way towards inferring future puzzle designs both as a designer and helping the player come to the solution a lot quicker. In the Blackwell series by Wadget Eye, players are teamed up with a ghost named Joey. And from the very first chapter of the episode, Joey's rule set is laid out pretty clear. He's a ghost so he can phase through objects, and his only way of directly interacting with our world is basically by blowing on objects, creating like a wind or a gust. Now Joey doesn't get any upgrades, the rules don't change at any point in the title or in the future episodes. So the player is tasked with using the internal logic of the game to solve these puzzles. So that while even though the game itself takes place in a version of New York City, and obviously is ground in real life that way, the puzzle themselves work on the own internal logic of having a ghost as a partner. And like we've talked about before, when we're discussing internal logic or realistic fiction, that it's not about trying to ground anything in real life. Again, we don't have examples of being able to fly, throw fireballs, uh, do magic powers, things like that. But once you've established the rules and lore of your world, it then goes by the developer in order to start formulating how these things are supposed to be put together. So let's say for instance I have a special power that lets me shoot out lightning. Well, if I'm stuck in an area where machinery needs to be turned on, one solution would obviously be to use lightning magic to turn things on. Or maybe to fry a panel to access something else. Again, the point is that the rules of the universe, whether it be a realistic or unrealistic, still fit within the confines of this puzzle design. But the problem when we talk about out universe puzzles is that the developer is basically taking elements or knowledge that aren't either explained within this game or are relying on outside knowledge in order to solve a puzzle. Now, like we said, some things are common knowledge. Again, we all know that green means go, red means stop. But how many people know exactly how a transmission works in a car? Or the best ways to remove acidic elements from a component or a compound? And this is when you run to that risk in terms of puzzle design, that if the player, or if you're designing a puzzle that's relying on outside knowledge or real life examples, if the player base doesn't have that, then how are they supposed to solve this puzzle without looking it up? Because as we've said, a major failure of any puzzle is if the player must go outside the game space in order to solve it. Another point about Animal Universe puzzles is that they tend to not really mesh with the gameplay itself. Imagine playing a Mario game where 
you come to a platform section, and instead of having Mario jump on platforms, the game takes you to a statistics problem that if you solve it, Mario will then make it across the platforms perfectly. It makes no sense, it can often be seen as padding out the experience, and in many ways it can also cheapen your game. Because again, these puzzles don't necessarily fit within the universe or tone that you're trying to describe. And it can hurt your game to have more puzzles like this, rather than having less puzzles, but having them be in-universe. So, we're going to switch to some game footage now of the seventh guest. And the reason why I'm saying it here is that I'm going to give you guys a little quiz before we have our little Patreon plug. The puzzle that I'm about to show you, in terms of the lore, happens in a bedroom where an NPC is looking at the carpet and remarking how it reminds her of a maze that she used to solve as a child, where the goal was again to the middle. Now, what I just said has absolutely no relation to the puzzle I'm about to show you, but can you figure out what puzzle we're going to look at? While you think about that, first off, a quick shout out to our Patreon supporters, and then we'll show off that puzzle. And now a quick shout out to the supporters over on patreon.com slash gwbicer. Alright, so here we have the seventh guess, and here's our carpet. Did you guess what the puzzle is? If you guess chess-based puzzle, you are correct. And I really would be sh shocked to hear anybody who actually figured that out who haven't played this game before. And uh, when it comes <laughs> to this kind of thing, and Chow is trying to give me the solution down below. He actually had to send it to me on Discord, because there is no way we were figuring this out on stream, or even just be able to type this into the YouTube chat. But there are several big problems with this puzzle. The first is that this is 100% out of universe. What the heck does this have to do with a carpet that looks like a maze, let alone a ghost story? I'm, I'm asking, I would like someone to explain this one to me here. The second big problem is that it's relying on outside knowledge for the player to even understand what they're doing. Now, I've played chess before, so I knew what a bishop was, I know how they are supposed to be played. But, if somebody is playing the seventh guess, and they have never looked at a chess board, or even know how to play chess, how are they even supposed to be Begin to solve a puzzle like this. There is no in-game reference that explains what this is. There's nothing to mention even how to play chess within the seventh guess. And that is a big problem because you cannot rely on outside knowledge, especially when it is game impacting or game progressing like this. And then the third point is that I don't know what the solution is. I don't even know what the actual uh, order is for coming up with the solution. And that's not good. As we've talked about, a good puzzle needs to explain to the player, what are the pieces, what's my solution, and then kind of let them infer as to how to get to that point. With this one, the game makes no attempt to explain what these pieces are. There's no hint uh, even just like a small screen that tells me what I'm trying to achieve. So how am I supposed to solve this puzzle without any knowledge whatsoever unless I just flat out look it up or have Child send me like a small short story of the solution to it? Because even if I begin to start to grasp what the rules are in terms of moving the bishops around, I don't know what the game wants me to do. Does it want me to create a pattern? Does it want me to switch their sides, which I believe that's what the actual puzzle is? Does it want me to spell out a name? I don't know. And that's a problem. If the player can't see or understand what the solution is going to be, they will never be able to solve your puzzle. And this is why out of universe puzzles aren't as well received as an in-universe one. Again, a better puzzle for this room in the setting would have been giving me a maze to solve, because that's what the person in this room is talking about. The carpet looks like a maze, we pull it up, it's a chess puzzle. Again, that doesn't really make sense within this consent, or in this context. And when your game is built entirely on puzzles like this, it's going to frustrate the player.
As a bonus point, this game features a puzzle where I had to understand the, that there is a real world called Ruddy, which I believe means red or uh, red tones or something like that. Now, I have never heard that word before, and I, again, I think Chow was the one who told me that, that was a real world, a real word. So, if I'm supposed to solve a word-based puzzle and you're using words that aren't common, how is some, someone supposed to figure this out? And bonus points, if you keep the original English, but then try to translate this game into other languages. Because would someone who only speaks Japanese know what the term ruddy is? I don't know. Or some other equivalent. And again, this is why in-universe puzzles are typically superior and oftentimes more creative than out-of-universe counterparts. A great example, of course, would be, as we've talked about before, with games like Space Chem and Finner Factory and the like. Even though many of Zaktronk's games do have some basics of real world in terms of the pseudocode and stuff like TIS-100, Shenzhen, EXA punks, and etc., it's still kept within its own internal universe. Each game, he has his own language, essentially for programming. So that even though you can understand programming and that will help, you still need to work within the universe of the game to solve the puzzle. And as you can see over the last few minutes, we're not solving this one anytime soon. But to begin to wrap things up for this piece, puzzle design works best when it fits within the game space in question. And you can even do simple things like we see in casual games where they'll use like a bunch of pipes to maybe make one of like those uh, fill all the sections with water puzzles or swap things around. And I think you're about to see a crazy cutscene over here, which unfortunately you won't be able to hear, but you can see some crazy, <laughs> some weird stuff there. But as things begin to wrap up, the better puzzles try to fit within the context of the universe. And while that may be harder to do, ultimately it's going to lead to a much stronger game. But with that said, thanks for watching this critical thought. If you'd like to support us on Patreon, it is at patreon.com slash gwblazer to get your name on our thank you page and come back for daily discussions here and on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy things, be sure to do all the liking and subscribing that the kids are doing these days. Check out our Discord channel link down below where we hang out and chat game design and come back later tonight for our regular streamings. But that's it. And tune in for more great content here and on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games.